What's up? I'm Nick Limbs. Welcome back to Zebra Force. So my newest single, Distraction, uh, came out a little bit ago, a few weeks, maybe even a month, two months. I don't know. Time is an illusion. But it's been out for a little while, and I thought it would be a good idea to talk a little bit more about the behind the scenes of how this song came about since I'm doing this whole YouTube thing now. So everybody has their preferred distractions. Some people take a smoke break. Some people call their best friend to procrastinate the task that they're working on. Everybody has something. And although I have plenty of these types of distractions all the time, I find that my consistent one throughout my entire life has been creating. I distract myself from creating with creating. And then nothing gets done. I just end up with hundreds of projects that are just like, most of the way there or half of the way there, but nothing actually comes of it. I think distractions are super necessary though. They help us refocus, they help us recenter. Taking breaks is obviously super, super important. Obviously some distractions can be negative though to your, your overall quality of life, your, your mind, your body, etc. And I certainly have those too, but it's important to recognize poor distractions and replace them with positive ones. I wrote this song to remind me that sometimes you need to have that self-assessment. Sometimes you need to say, yo, what am I doing? <laughs> Why am I sitting on the couch watching this show that I don't even like, eating chips, and I'm not even hungry? Sometimes we get too involved with our distractions, and, and then it becomes a part of our personality. You know, we go to work, we come home, and we sit on the couch, and we watch TV, and that's just our habits. It can be very difficult to break those habits. You have to have a certain level of self-awareness to be able to do that. And uh, this song, to me, kind of represents that in my own personal life. I feel like we're always subconsciously looking for some sort of a distraction, but rarely are we truly consciously self-aware about our decisions. The chorus of this song represents that constant search. I just need a bit of something to get me through this life, and I just need a little someone to help me through tough times are both references to my own poor choices of filling my time with things that just aren't productive. Um, you know, enjoying recreational substances or spending a little too much time with relationships that aren't productive in my life. And the turnaround line is, of course, maybe I just need a bit of distraction. And that's where the conscious realization of needing to fill my time comes into play. When I go to sleep, I think of you, and that whole verse to me is saying I should choose my distraction based on what is constantly driving my mind. When I go to sleep, when I lay down at night, what am I constantly thinking of? And truthfully, it's just always some new creative project. My mind goes crazy with all sorts of things that I could have been working on had I not distracted myself with negatively impacting vices. Of course, that is just my interpretation. I purposefully left it kind of vague because I believe that the best lyrics are applicable to as many situations as possible, but my literal meaning of the song definitely comes out in the sort of rap verse section. It's just silly goofy fun because I'm silly goofy and fun. But I do have a few more things to mention uh, on a little bit more of a deep level on this song, and it actually comes from just the the production of the song. I think this was a really good lesson for me to commit to releasing music if it's finished and to stop stressing about it being perfect, something I mentioned in my last video uh, that I'm actively working on and intend for this channel to help me out with. When I finished the song over a year ago, my first thought was I'm never going to release this. I do not. This is for me. I don't want to put it out there. It's not for anyone else to hear. It's just a fun little goof that I decided to make. And it sat on my hard drive for quite a while until I made a bunch of life changes and career choices that led to me feeling a little bit more, um, fuck it. And it's really no coincidence of all songs that are finished on my hard drive. This was the first one to be released during this new era of my career because this was my least favorite. And I thought, 
if I could put out my least favorite song that I've made and find some sort of confidence in it, then I could continue. <laughs> I could find confidence in anything I make if I find confidence in the one song that I didn't like. And actually, after test playing it for a bunch of friends and family, I found that some of them actually enjoyed it more than anything else that I've released. And that just goes to show everybody has their own opinion and that you shouldn't weigh the value of your art on how you perceive it because somebody else might love it. So that positive feedback from testing it with friends and family, plus a few other small adjustments that I made um, a year later after revisiting it, uh, made me confident enough to put it out there. And even if it didn't come out the way that I originally envisioned it, it is out and it is a real thing. <laughs> and I've found that I've walked into this lesson one too many times in life. I, I always forget that when you conceive an idea, the end product is never, never exactly what you envisioned it to be. Because your ideas are just thoughts. They're isolated without real world variables pushing and pulling the idea in their own ways. In real life, your original idea can never exist because there are thousands, if not millions, of variables we can't even conceptualize that weigh our project in one direction or another. You know that, that feeling when you get hit with a brilliant idea, it's like a light bulb goes off in your head, you know? That feeling is an addiction, and I am constantly having to remind myself that the feeling of the idea does not correlate one-to-one -one with the feeling of the actualized project or the, you know, the final product. You can imagine every brushstroke, every color, and every detail, but until you actually put paint to canvas and bring that vision to life, it's just a fleeting thought, a mere figment of your imagination. And once you step back and look at it, you, you know, you, you look at it from some sort of a different lens, you think, wow, this is worse than something my dog puts out on the lawn every day. <laughs> How, how could I have been so foolish to think that the moves that I made to actualize this idea were the right ones when it, it looks like this? But if you take one more step back, you start to see the beauty in your creation, the pure flow of creative universal energy flowing through you to make that thing. And if you take a second to appreciate that concept from a level beyond your ego, you start to be able to enjoy your art a little bit more. Ideas are crucial. They're the sparks that ignite the fire of creativity. They're the starting point, the seed from which something can grow. But it's important to remember that ideas are not real. They are amalgamations of all of the life that you consume on a daily basis. You get out of life what you put in. And your ideas are just representations of the content that you consume recycled into your own words. It's beautiful, but it's not real. And that makes it really difficult to take that extra step back from your own mind and see it as it is in real, factual state of existence. I know that I'm not alone in having that problem of looking at, at what I create from the wrong lenses. We all do it as creative people. At the end of the day, the only person that we spend a full 24 hours a day with is ourselves. So it takes some real effort on our part to look beyond your own skewed or biased perspective. So the next time that you have a stroke of genius, remember that it's just the beginning. Take that idea and run with it. Put in the hours, do the research, practice your craft, and bring that idea to life. The true magic of creation in life is seeing the truth, a piece of work brought from idea to reality. If you have any strategies navigating this problem that we as creatives tend to run into, uh, or if you think what I'm saying is uh, insane and makes no sense at all, please leave it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and continue this conversation. And that's about all I have to say uh, regarding my new single, Distraction. I hope you enjoyed listening to some behind the scenes thoughts about how the song came to fruition. Uh, I hope to do more of these videos uh, 
moving forward, especially after my new EP releases on November 24th, of which this single is a part of. The EP is called Centrifugal Zebra Force. Uh, again, it's out November 24th. Please follow the link in the description to find it on your favorite streaming platforms. And that's it for me today. Thanks for watching. See you soon.